Hi, everybody. Hope you had a good day. 5.06. I'm meteorologist uh, Rod Hill coming to you from the Vancouver, Portland area uh, with this update. Partly sunny skies much of the day. Portland got up, I know, at least to 64. Might have been warmer out there this afternoon when the final report comes in. But now the clouds have thickened up. And as you look at the graphic, this is a, a recent visible satellite picture. And you can see there's a low offshore. This is interesting because this is going to drop right down to the south and then eventually sunday into monday let me look at my notes make sure i'm talking correctly yeah looks like uh sunday into monday this low will move inland down into california ahead of it this is the band of clouds that is now thickening up in our area and rain showers will become likely this evening the biggest headline i have and i'll show you why uh, this could happen is a chance of weekend thunderstorms. Now, the best chance looks to be central, eastern, Cascades, but absolutely, if we get some big boomers Saturday afternoon over the Cascades, they might migrate and push back into parts of the Willamette Valley. The weekend forecast overall for Portland, Salem, Vancouver, the coast still looks really good, but I'm going to get into why I'm watching this weekend thunderstorm chance okay and let, let's jump right to that so this is a um, future cast courtesy of kgw tv and notice that the clock 6 p.m and this is not the only model that's showing this many are 6 p.m saturday see the bright colors heavy rain probably some hail embedded and an excellent chance that there are thunderstorms lightning strikes around mount jefferson Another storm that is setting east of Madras. This is a big outbreak of thunderstorm cluster activity. Notice in green, again, this is Saturday, 6 p.m. There's some rain down around Eugene, moving up toward Albany. These storms are going to have a, a, a track record of pushing to the north. And it's very possible, see this big one over Jefferson? That Saturday evening, this bends back to the west as it weakens, brings rain, and maybe even some thunderstorm activity into the Cascade Foothill communities and maybe even the heart of the I-5 corridor. So this is what I'm watching. So bottom line, you're out in about Saturday afternoon, especially early evening. Look to the south, look to the Cascades. And if you see those big bellowing cumulus clouds, um, there could be thunderstorms. And if that's the case, you'll need to watch that because this activity might bend back into the Willamette Valley. So that's a, a fairly new development, something I haven't put a lot of stock into uh, until the modeling came out this morning and really started to bite hard on that. So here's the radar right now. Again, it's uh, a little bit after five o'clock. In green, we've got rain reaching around in Long Beach, right up around Astoria, probably some sprinkles in some of these blue areas, but basically more than anything, these blue shades are just where the clouds have thickened. And that includes Portland, that includes down into Salem. I want to, uh, this is the uh, GFS MM5 model, basically the GF, GFS American model with higher resolution that is um, made possible up at uh, the University of Washington. So I'm just going to play this. This is um, tomorrow afternoon at, uh, in the afternoon, tomorrow afternoon, Friday at 4 p.m. Notice all dry up and down I-5. Notice some rain toying with the Cascades. Notice showers and maybe thunderstorms scattered out across eastern areas. Now, I just want to play this into Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon. And here we go, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. See this cluster of storms moving northward? This is 3 o'clock Saturday. Here we are, 5. Here we are, 6 o'clock Saturday. Let me keep playing it. Here we are at 8 o'clock Saturday. It's weakening. There's another strong system down here. But this is what we just looked at. Crawling up towards Mount Hood into some of the Cascade communities of Marion and Clackamas County. There's this bit, okay, and then it weakens it. But clearly there's a threat that some of this could hold together and move up into the valley. So lots to uh, to look at and, and keep an eye on. Um, let's see here, any, yeah, there's the mainstream winery. Look at the clouds. Look at Gerhardt by the sea. Let me go ahead and click on this one. <laughs> That's dark. So again, it was the North Coast that was going to show the first chance of rain coming in around 4 this afternoon. 5.11, likely some rain in this area right now. That's Tillamacad, the camera Gearheart by the sea, up by the McMinimans and that golf course, the Gearheart Links, where Seaside's embedded right in here. Looks like some rain in that area. But uh, that's a pretty graphic, uh, ominous-looking sky. Rain's coming. Rain has arrived. Um, look from the uh, camera up there at Gearheart by the sea. Okay, um, no watches, warnings, advisories, nothing like that at the time for Portland, 
Same thing down in Medford. The Pendleton office put out this graphic talking about their Friday, tomorrow, thunderstorm threat. And in dark green, including Ontario, Baker City, Enterprise, uh, La Grande. So now you're getting into uh, just kind of on the uh, eastern slope of the Blue Mountains. Um, at least in the risk area for some severe thunderstorms. So again, storms absolutely scattered in eastern Oregon tomorrow. Then the big clusters of storms that we're looking at potentially in central Oregon on Saturday. So uh, several different areas of thunderstorms to keep an eye on. All right, this is the uh, GFS American model. We're going to play this into the first part of next week. This is future radar, basically, okay? Here's the rain. We just saw it on radar. This is absolutely perfect. Radar showing this exact same fetch of moisture right now. Rain right around Astoria, rain over Long Beach. Let me, here we are at, um, da, 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 da. this will be 8 p.m. tonight. Rain in Kelso, Longview, starting to move towards Scappoose and toward Portland. So we still have some dry time. And then it kind of breaks up overnight. This is Friday morning. I think there absolutely could be some showers in the area Friday morning. This doesn't show it. doesn't mean they're not there. Um, and what it does show, did you catch that? The rain that was up here to the north, where my cursor is, is actually migrated down to the south during the night and morning hours of tomorrow. And a lot of models are showing that. But now here's a return flow of moisture firing from south to north tomorrow afternoon. There's Redmond and Ben getting some showers. This could be the thunderstorms that the uh, Pendleton office was talking about around the Blues, LeGrand, and Baker City tomorrow afternoon. Here's some big boomers down around the Medford area and south of uh, Roseburg, it looks like, tomorrow evening. Here's some rain up around Newport tomorrow evening. And again, there's at least a shower chance in Portland tomorrow into the evening hours. This is showing you that there's a better chance of moisture to the south tomorrow. That's probably true. And then here we go, that big cluster of storms firing up. This is Saturday Late morning, let me go ahead and play it into Saturday. Here we are at 5 p.m. That's yellow. That's heavy rain. That's probably thunderstorms producing lightning and thunder at this hour. Maybe some hail. Here it is still. And then this knocks it apart. This would be Saturday evening. So again, 50-50 chance. The storms fire up. Mount Jefferson getting nailed. 50% chance they then quickly fade away. Or 50% chance they'll hold together and come up into the valley. So we're watching that. Here is the upper flow pattern, and we'll start this with this afternoon. Here's the cold low that I started in that graphic and showing you with the red arrow that's going to be dropping south. You're going to see this low do just that, drop down to the south. There it goes pretty quickly, right? This is, let me back up. This is tomorrow afternoon at um, 5 p.m. The low now off the coast of Northern California. The rotation around this would send uh, migrating moisture from south to north up into our area potentially. Here's the low now Saturday, right over San Francisco. Again, a migration of moisture up into Oregon and unstable because of this low. Now, Sunday, see how the, the low weekend? Now it's a weakened trough over Nevada and Idaho. Um, and I like us being completely dry Sunday. Mainly I'm looking at that for the weekend, that Saturday late day evening thunderstorm threat. And then we go into the first of the week and we're watching this system come down from the northwest. So I still have highs in the 50s with a couple of days of cool showers on Monday and Tuesday. Um, snow levels at least down to 3,000 feet. Some of the modeling uh, this morning, so I grabbed my notes, show that, uh, where, 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 where am I? Yeah, modeling shows that Monday afternoon, we could have snow levels down to 2,000 feet. And then even Tuesday morning, there could be some snowflakes all the way down to 1,500 feet, potentially. So that's overnight evening low snow levels in the mountains. So that's really chilly for this time of the year. And right now, here's Tuesday. So again, Monday, Tuesday showers. Here's Wednesday. Now it's mostly moved over again to Nevada, Idaho, Montana. I think we're dry on Wednesday, still relatively cool. But then we get some warming on Thursday and Friday. Here's Saturday of next week. Here's Sunday. This is 558 millibar height. Kind of early to tell from this, but you would think maybe there's a chance of some showers on Sunday or Monday. But right now, the flow pattern looks weak enough. It's tough to tell something would be developing moisture or not. These are fairly normal temperatures, by the way, into much of next week. This is uh, Thursday the 25th, so a week from today. So really, if you back this up, once we lose, here's 
the Monday, there's the Tuesday showers, there's the Wednesday dry, there's some warming Thursday, Friday. And then it's really quiet all of the following week. Maybe there's a shower chance embedded in there or not. But really, again, the biggest story to me is it's pretty quiet. I don't see any concerns up in the mountains. Um, 43 at Timberline right now, 47 Meadows, 42 Ski Bowl. Government Camp, 48 degrees. All the passes are in good shape. No surprise there, including Cabbage Hill out over the Blues. Siskiyou Summit. With that low-pressure system diving down to California, right now the uh, weather forecast for the first part of the week out of Medford for the Siskiyou Summit calls for a highs a pass level to be 40 or better. So during the day, that would just be wet, certainly, okay? Um, snow level tomorrow morning from 4,000 to 5,500 feet. So that's kind of a wet mix uh, of snow showers and rain showers over the Cascades. And look at the pass level temperatures. 52 tomorrow, 60 on Saturday, 50 on Sunday. Cooler with that colder air Monday and Tuesday. Freezing temps, all snow at night. Maybe some snow-covered passes early Monday morning, early Tuesday morning. But then um, just clean, melted um, snow, meaning just clean pavement in the daytime hours of Monday and Tuesday. So that's a quick glance there. Here are the uh, temperatures, 5 o'clock numbers, 64 at Portland, 57 in Salem. Warmer down to Medford, 74. Hallelujah. How about that? Uh, 66 showers down there tomorrow. A shower chance on Saturday. Again, that low is dropping to the south. Even in the Sunday, this shows an a.m. chance and then becoming partly sunny. And then Monday, Tuesday, while Portland gets those showers coming from the northwest, it's dry down in southern Oregon on Monday, a chance of showers on Tuesday. Again, that's down in Medford. The coasts, check it out. Friday, 56, chance of showers, but a lot of dry time, I think. Saturday, a lot of dry time, a slight shower chance. Sunday's dry, 52, breezy, kind of cool. And then the showers on Monday, Tuesday, highs only in the low 50s. And there's that nice warm up mid midweek, Wednesday, 57, Thursday, 60 degrees so that would be really nice ben 64 right now chance of showers tomorrow 59 we talked about the thunderstorm threat on saturday sunday looks mainly dry becoming mostly sunny 59 and then monday tuesday this shows a dry monday but with those uh the two showery days in portland maybe some snow showers monday overnight into tuesday morning tuesday chilly and then warming up after that okay up in seattle 53 right now all dry tomorrow. Again, tomorrow's showers move north to south. So Seattle's dry during the day, 59. Saturday, great, 63. Sunday, great, 62. There's that rain coming in Monday, Tuesday, same as Portland, and then drying out midweek. And here is Portland's seven-day forecast, courtesy of Hazeldale Tire Pros. Uh, 65 degrees tomorrow, pretty similar temp to today. I think partly cloudy, a shower threat, but lots of dry time tomorrow. And maybe where you are during the day tomorrow, you don't see anything. Saturday, partly cloudy to mostly sunny and 70. Great day. But remember, cumulus clouds building late day Saturday, Saturday evening could lead to thunderstorms over the Cascades spilling into the valley. And I think I mentioned that, yeah. Partly cloudy to mostly sunny. Watch for spotty storms near the Cascades. Saturday night, partly cloudy, possible evening thunderstorms moving off the Cascades into the valley. Yeah, so what we talked about. So, those are my words. I manually typed that, by the way. <laughs> this is my manual forecast, my work. Sunday, partly cloudy, 65. The cool showers, highs, mid-50s, Monday, Tuesday, and then drying and warming to 60 on Wednesday, 63 on Thursday. That's about normal for this time of the year, by the way, those temperatures. All right, I'm Rod Hill. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't. Tell your friends about it. And for now, I'll say thank you and have a good night.